is a come everyone and the appropriateness of the different forms of ownership right uh, in my previous session if you remember we talked about the different two case study the Wu Yang is all trader the trip advice and she actually has a bus and then she actually happy with her business status she's a sole trader uh, in my second case study i have discussed about the chandrila chandrila is a multinational hotel chain uh, more than 100 hotels and we can see their profitability ratio increased from the 2011 to 15 uh, their profit has increased so talk about we discussed from this case study what's the difference between mnc and uh, why the business organizations are different like that? What what are they? Why are they satisfied with? What are the main objective of this? Now that we talk about the main factors affecting the appropriate of different forms of ownership, such as growth, size, the need for finance, control, limited liability. Uh, these are the main factors affecting the appropriateness of the different forms. And also we talk about uh, like if you want to grow, if you want to have a large organization, like need for big finance, you know, PLC methods and private limited company method is okay. Like, especially uh, if you want to have a control and, you know, everything at the private limited companies are okay. But, you know, with the size, you want to stay medium and small size, like, you know, uh, stable growth and have your own control and freedom. That is all trader level partnerships are possible. And limited liability concept also there limited liability companies are only limited private limited and public limited companies and also we talk about the other factors we talk about mainly the choice of legal status some organizations want to get the legal status in the business organizations such as limited liability uh, therefore making uh, large organizations the limited liability is important therefore company levels are important but some professional services like sole traders uh, like you know gardening decorating plumbing like that this like a, a freelance business sole trader method is okay and you talk about what the they plan to do with the profits right if you want to do expansion and if you have high like a large uh like you know big dreams i think plc's are better uh and otherwise sole traders are better and finally the different aspect of stakeholders also important when you're forming a business organization you have to take care of the uh, organization like you know the stakeholders aspects as well what the employees thinking about it what the managers thinking about it what the board of directors thinking about it all of this uh, and also talk about the different business objective and their size right we talk about small business organizations they wanted to actually solve traders will be they were more they, most of the time their objective will be survival is the main objective and the associated with other uh, objects like growth and everything profit satisfying can be the more most famous objective and family businesses like medium-sized businesses like private limited company they want to have some kind of a, uh, objectives uh, than the survival they need some growth objective might be uh, limited and other objectives are more important like keep the control with them uh, without going public uh, the family business because that's their main objective the family is number one that mainly keeping the control within their family. And also the large organizations such as multinationals, they have a large dreams like, you know, organizations such as Toyota, Honda, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, all these business organizations have big organizations, this system, they want to bigger, become greater and greater. Therefore expansion and the growth market share increase their main objective. Okay, so today uh, we talk about the, the MCQs as well. So chapter review part, I'm going to take you to this case study. Uh, Ishani's babygear.com case study. Okay, uh, this one is a, a Sri Lankan case study uh, from Ishani Atapath. Uh, so I invite Lee Yong, can you read the case study, please? Uh, case study, Ishani, uh, Ishani babygear.com. Ashani Atapatu has run her retail organization, a retail operation selling baby clothes and accessories as a sole trader. Then as a partnership and now as a limited company. Set up in 1986, the business first traded from her home in Colombo, Sri Lanka by mail order. But now it has a shop and a growing internet business. Ashani said, when I started, I started small, operating from home and never needing outside funding. So being a sole trader seemed the simplest option. Three years later, Ishani decided to open a shop. However, she needed money for premises, stock and marketing. After a few months, there was a strain on her cash resources. Therefore, she decided to take on her best friend as a partner. This helped to share the burden of running the business and raise 6 million rupees in much needed cash. However, 
Yeah. After 18 months, Ashani fell out with her partner. Her partner wanted to take more profit from the business, whereas Ashani wanted to use it for her, for expansion. The breakup of the partnership was bitter and Ashani ended up having to pay her friend off. Ashani said, I was a fool, really. I should have drawn up a deed of, of partnership in case we disagreed. Immediately after the breakup, Ashani formed a private limited company. Ashani had 20, had 70% of the shares because she wanted control. Her mother bought 20% as she allowed two of her staff to buy the remaining 10%. She, wa she wanted to reward them for their loyalty and also keep them motivated. Some of the business rate, some of the money raised from selling the shares was also was used to set up an online business. This is now expanding fast, and Ishani thinks she could develop a small chain of shops. A major retailer has recently offered to offer the number of stores for sale. However, to buy, convert, and stock them would cost 400 million rupees. The only way she could raise this money is by going public. Okay, thank you. So you can see this case study, the uh, shanibbe.com uh, Sri Lankan case study. Uh, she has started the business as a sole trader. You can see her journey. Uh, she started the business as a sole trader. Thereafter, she uh, looks to expansion and she found the partner. And then with the partner, she actually raised about 6 million capital. And then uh, that also business after 18 months at one and a half years, uh, Ishani fell out with the partner. That is, they break up and then the partnership business also, because, you know, there are frictions from in the partnership business. There are being disadvantages, friction between partners. In this case, there are two different objectives. The partner wanted to take more profit. On the other hand, Ishani wanted to actually uh, uh, keep the use the profit for the expansion. Uh, these controversial uh, things because of the, the cost to separate the, both of them, their business organization, this uh, will actually they break up from the partnership. And as, after that, uh, she take the fully control. And then um, uh, she look at her statement says, hey, I was a fool, really. I should have drawn up a deed of partnership in case we disagree. Uh, you can see that clearly she make the partnership. She actually carry on the partnership without a deed of partnership. Agreement is really important because we can uh, do the business with or without agreement. So this case, she uh, without deed of partnership, without agreement only, she actually with her friend, she actually uh, like verbal agreement. And then they after they break up and after that, as, as regarding profit sharing, this uh, the main matter came because her partner wanted to take more profit, but she don't want to take more profit. Uh, because you want to use that money for expansion, this controversial, this friction between partners caused the business collapsing. Thereafter, she actually converted the business into the next level, private limited company. After that, Sheshani formed a private limited company and uh, she took the 70% of the shares because she wanted to have the control. So 70% of the business owned by her and 30, remaining 30% she gave out to the other uh, directors, especially family members. Uh, so accordingly, her mother uh, bought 20% and uh, she allowed two of her staff to buy the remaining 10 So uh, the other stakeholders are 30%, 20% to the mom, 10% to the other two members of staff. So they might be got 5%, 5% each like that. So anyway, they invest, invested in the business and then they 30% mean that not free of charge. So they had to bring some capital to the Shani's business. So she accepted and she gave some kind of percentage. Uh, of ownership for them, but she keep the 70% controlling power. Uh, she wanted to reward them for their loyalty and also keep them motivated because that's why as employees, as a family members, if you have some kind of stake in the business, like if you give them profit share from the business organization, they were also motivated by operating, by joining with you. So as a result, what happened, um, the, some of the money, so loyalty and some of the money raised from selling the shares from that uh, two parties and also uh, she was used to set up an online business, right? These days, very uh, famous is online business case studies are really uh, helpful this, uh, during this pandemic time. Right? This is now expanding fast and Ashani thinks she could uh, develop the small chain of shops uh, like that. A major retailer has recently offered a number of stores for sale. Uh, however, to buy, uh, convert and stock them would cost about 400 million US dollars. So 400 million US this expansion because she got option opportunity uh, to actually expand her business because there is a when you're doing the business something like that you're getting that kind of offers like that because it's an online business also uh, so many business proposals coming so major retailer has recently offered a number of stores for sale like um, 
you can uh, available like these locations they are giving you to uh, expand your business territory however to buy and convert and store them stock them uh, this opportunity so it cost them uh, 400 million sri lankan rupees the only way she could raise this money by going public which means she had to convert to a, a private limited company uh, to a public limited, limited uh, listed company the colombo stock exchange then only she can raise this amount of money through the share market so this is a next step decision you can see this is a the clothes she is selling and then uh, they're asking a couple of questions important questions why was a sole trade organization most appropriate for ishani's business when she first started because I, as I told you, a sole trader business model is like a kindergarten. Like everyone, the starting point is the sole trader model. You can learn so many things. You can get most a lot of business experience, exposure. So that's why when you, if for a large, if you might, you might have a big dream in future, but the earlier, the most important thing, you have to start small. And then later on, you can actually identify your true potential and then you can invest more. And uh, when you actually, that's how you actually uh, start. So basically, when you start off stage of the Shani, she's a sole trader because she can take a fully control and she can commit it to the business and she doesn't have enough, uh, like much capital at that time. So that's the best thing is a sole trader level. So we'll see the answer, answers later on. So discuss why Shani formed the partnership. So this question in answering, uh, you have to uh, give two reasons at least, you know, discuss why, so you know, maybe analyze why Shani formed the partnership or you can say outline one reason why Shani formed a partnership, because in this case, uh, she uh, she actually desperately needed a partnership because she had the burden of the business, doing business alone being difficult. So at that time, she there's a friend uh, actually uh, came to actually help her out. So at that time, that's why she was, uh, she can share the burden workload with the partner and then more capital can be raised. So these are the main reasons. Ne? However, you can see because discussion means you have to talk about the, ne? it's like impact question. Partnerships are good, but partnership actually sometimes, you know, frictions can be happen. You have to share the profits with them right then. And third question, Ashani formed the private limited company after the breakup of partnership. Do you think it was appropriate? Yes. So after uh, breakup with the partner, they, they actually Ashani wanted to actually quickly convert her business to online scale because another business, uh, she want to open up another ch chapter in her business. So that's the base idea is to actually convert to a uh, private limited company at that time. So the private limited company, uh, she actually took 70% uh, and her mom and the other two employees got 30%. So that's why I think Ashani formed a private limited company because then they have limited liability and also you can reward your stakeholders also like that way. So uh, last question, assess whether Ashani would, uh, should form a public limited company to buy the shop. So this case is a kind of a say, uh, evaluate question, Ted marker. Well, Mark, you can see uh, this question. Somebody can define what is public limit company, uh, two advantage of forming a public limit company, and two disadvantage of public limit company. Right. For this time, I, I explain you what is the structure of a nine marker and twelve marker because in your coming exams, you are getting nine marker and twelve markers. So when you are writing a nine marker question, uh, nine marker structure, I'll explain you. Uh, nine marker question is normally is very easy structure, no definition. So two positives and uh, two negatives only. We just, you have to be a simple form you have to memorize. Two positives, two negatives. Uh, no definition, no conclusion. So normal nine mark questions are coming. Uh, justify questions, right? Justify question. For example, justify which option is better. Option one, continue as a sole trader. Option two, convert to private limited company. Hmm? Option one, for example, let's say a public limited company. Option two, private limited company like the option one let's say uh, to convert to a it's a uh, customer satisfaction option two profit maximization like there's different options you have to justify so in this case you have to pick one option right so what are the main points uh, you have to not no, pick one option don't talk, talk both option pick one option uh, right and then uh, after picking that one option, you have to talk about the two advantages and two disadvantages of, the, of that option. If you have a you talk about, for example, two options, first option, limited liability company, and second option, let's say partnership, uh, continue as a partnership, or first, second, first option, limited liability company. So if you convert, uh, if you pick the first option, talk about the first option only. Then you have to talk about the private limited company, uh, two benefits and two limitations. 
So we need to have an application. So we are giving this, uh, the marks are given like this, AO2 application skills, we are giving three marks, right? And then uh, three marks are there. And then AO3 analysis, we are giving three marks. And AO4 evaluation, we are giving three marks, which is AO234. AO, AO stands for assessment objective. Assessment objective two is application skill. Right, uh, AO3 is analysis skill and AO4 is a evaluation skill, so application. So all these four points, because you are writing the uh, four, four positives, you know, two positives and two negatives. So all these, I think you can arrange everything in the two paragraphs. One paragraph consists of the two advantages and one paragraph consists of the two disadvantages. When you write a disadvantage, you can start with the however, however, or on the other hand, something like that, give the opposite side. So application must be there in this all these four points you must have the application with whichever the case whatever the case that you are getting in the examination day you have to provide the application and then um, an, uh, analyzing point you can say it's a that means you have to provide the it's AO3 stand for analyze analyze uh, option you're getting three marks for this uh, situation that is you have to write the mainly write in the advantages and you're explaining uh, what are the causes, cost, and the consequences of the uh, situation, right? Like uh, you can say because of the private limited company, you can get limited liability. Because of the limited liability, owners will get protected their personal belongings like that. Analyzing me, you are going to give the uh, these three C's of analysis. You are writing the point like regarding so if you write the point, then you can talk about the uh, cost and uh, consequences. Hmm? consequences and the uh, causes, hmm, which causes something like this. So analyzing is like right, your development, basically the development, develop what, ha what has happened as a result of that, right? Like we are using this uh, analyzing method, the sentence building format called BLT, BLT, like bacon, lettuce, tomato, like a sandwich model, you can see because of this, this will leads to and therefore, like this sentence building patterns we are using, right? Because then uh, again, second sentence, you can start with the leads to, right? This leads to, and then third sentences you can develop, therefore. Right? Or you can see, because therefore, therefore, something happened because of that this happened, therefore this happened like that. For example, because of the limited liability, owners will get the protection of their personal belongings. Therefore, uh, the business organization X, huh, they will be getting more shareholders to invest because they get encouraged to invest their uh, business because they are not losing anything like that. So because of the uh, company, uh, because of the limited, and also because of the company have a uh, incorporated business, even though the owner dies, business will continue even after the death of the owner. This leads to have the, uh, you know, uh, long time, long term relationship, the long term survival of the business organization. Therefore, you can get uh, more uh, right, you know, funds from the bankers and everything attract more investors because this is have an incorporated status. Therefore, it is easier for them to actually make some money, uh, gain capital like that. So this is the way you're analyzing this analyzing technique. I just now I explained you BLT model because leads to and therefore, right? And AO4, AO4, AO4 stands for the evaluation thing. Evaluate mean that you have to talk about the mainly uh, the uh, drawback section and the mainly you talk about the what will happen the drawbacks uh, so good side as well as a bad side evaluation means you should know able to identify their evaluate something giving some kind of a right uh, the negative side of the thing because both side you must be because this justify question justification must be show the good side as well as a bad side. So evaluation stand for the uh, how many negative points you are going to write how many like impacts you are going to write the consequences you are going to write in negative side Right. Sometimes it include the small conclusion as well, but normally nine mark we don't need a conclusion. Uh, only just the two positives and two negative. Right. So same time you can see the twelve marker structure also. So I can explain that in another. Uh, you can see twelve marker. Uh, in start twelve marker structure. Uh, I'll explain it in different color. So twelve marker structure means uh, we are checking the definition definition para is important or knowledge para that is important when you're starting something say evaluate the impact of multinational company to the economy evaluate the impact of uh, public limited public cooperation to the economy evaluate the impact of uh, something you know uh, evaluate the impact of business location 
the like something business like that. So different evaluation questions can become like a big topics. So when that come topics comes to twelve marks, we have to define the concept. It is asking for multinational. Define the multinational. It's asking from the business location. Define the business location. If you're asking from the public corporations, define public corporation like that. Definition is important. And then after that, uh, again similar to nine marker, two positives, and then second, third paragraph, two negatives, and last paragraph conclusion. So the difference between nine marker and the twelve marker is the similar writing, but you need to have a definition and a conclusion. So it's always two two method, right? Nine mark also two two, right? Two positive, two negative only. But twelve marker you have a two positive, two negative. And the introduction and the conclusion, right? Here, no nine mark. You don't need an introduction or no conclusion. Just a two points, two negatives, two positives, two negative. But twelve mark, you must have a definition and conclusion. Conclusion para means I'll explain you what is a conclusion. Conclusion means you can write about the the because you are identifying here disadvantages. Conclusion, you can write the solutions. Solutions to the all that problem. For example, if multinational company doing environmental pollution. In solution part conclusion you can say yes the pollution can be controlled by having the pr proper government regulation right if multinational company actually expert in the labor the government can control it like that give some conclusion with the solution solution or oh, alternate viewpoint huh? alternate your viewpoint uh, right alternate views so that also possible in the conclusions here without saying okay uh, better than multinational company i think you can say government should support the local businessmen uh, some foreign direct investment right like that you can give some overall like a, what are the like other alternative possible chances to expand like that this is the way so 12 mark i'm doing some passive questions with you in future then you can find out in my uh, in future sessions we are going to do this nine mark 12 mark practice questions passive questions this is the main structure so today I uh, officially I will teach you what is a nine marker structure and the twelve marker structure. Okay, let's go to this Ashani baby gear case study. These four questions. Uh, the Ashani baby gear. You can see uh, the question number one. They are asking why was a sole trade organization was appropriate for Ashani's business when she first started, right? So why sole trade business uh, very appropriate? Many small business when they start are sole traders uh, unless large amount of money are needed. This type of organization is suitable because it is easy to set up and the owner is in complete control. Owner is in complete control. Uh, and also, Ishani said, I started, I started small, operating from home. I never needed outside funding to be a sole trader, seem a simplest option. And so if you see the Sri Lanka, there's a famous uh, like entrepreneur called Otara Gunawardana. Uh, she started a similar time which is called Odell, like uh, but like a, uh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, she started as a business. Uh, she had a business in a, in a vehicle, in a, in a car, in a dicky. She opened the, uh, you know, that she have some boxes of, you know, clothes like that. And she, in the Colombo, she came. And after that, after 20 years, she sold her business for 2 billion rupees uh, for a multinational company. So like that, now Odell is under the uh, super, the fully sub, is a company. Uh, the subsidiary of the Softlogic industry, Softlogic group in Sri Lanka. But the Odell company, if you go through the history, that's the same kind of a story there. She started with nothing. Uh, she, after she graduated, she came to Sri Lanka and then she started to sell clothes in a small car. Uh, she opened the dicky and then she sell like that. And later on, she actually bought a small premises and he sold, sold like that and then came to the Colombo. Uh, and then after that, she actually started the big warehouse iconic uh, name Odell, uh, Otara, Odell, you know, other than anything like that. So now business is a very highly successful business in Sri Lanka. It's a premium range of clothing, you can see. Uh, after that, the Malaysian company bought from her and then they sold another local company like that. This is a really success businesses like that. They start very small level. Okay, that's the main reason. Question number two, uh, they're asking, discuss why Ashani formed a partnership. Ashani formed a partnership after trading successfully from her home as a sole trader for three years, Ashani decided to open a shop. However, she needed some money for premises, stock and marketing. Also, after a few months, there was a strain on cash flow. There was a strain on cash flow. Therefore, she decided to take on her best friend as a partner. This helped to share the burden of running the business and injected 6 million much needed cash. So she invited her best friend. 
So, but what happened to friendship after 18 months? Uh, they have to break down as well because uh, there is no there's a friction between the partnership. Does that happen? Okay. So that's the even if you uh, join your best friend without agreement. So this kind of situations can be happen. So what's the the what you can learn from these stories? Even your best friend, in if you start start doing business like a partnership, problems might arise, and then later on it will fall out. Therefore, always better to have agreement before you doing something. Then you know, okay, according to agreement, we can act. So they don't violate the agreement. Then even though any problem comes, they can refer to the agreement. So that's the main advantage of having a partnership deed agreement, right? Okay. The third question asking. Um, Ashani formed a private limited company after breakup of the partnership. Do, uh, do you think it was appropriate? Ashani is thinking uh, it was appropriate. Okay, I invite uh, Keshani, can you read that part? Question number three. Uh, sorry, which question? Question number three. Do you think it was appropriate? Uh, after the breakup of the partnership, Ishani was right to form a private limited company. This type of organization helped Ishani to achieve her objectives. Ishani now has control of the business. This is because she has 70% of the shares. Her, mo her mother bought 20% and she allowed two of her best staff to buy the remaining 10%. However, with 70%, uh, no one can overrule it. Ishani sold sold shares to our employees to raise money, sorry, more money for the business. However, another reason was because she wanted to reward them for their loyalty and keep them motivated. Finally, Ishani uh, needed more capital to expand the business. Some of the money raised from selling shares was used to set up an online business. Okay, thank you. So you can see now everything. It was appropriate, yes, because 70%, no one can overrule her, right? Not 70%, if you have 51%, you have the controlling power. No one can't challenge you with 51%, you have the more than half, but here it's safe. 70% uh, is more safe, like, but even the even another 10%, she's 20%, she's gave it to mom. So that's also another thing because close relative. And 10% only they are given to proper outsiders, like that also employees, because they want to give some, uh, they want to make sure that they are loyalty for their loyalty, because they know they are working with the, uh, like moral, okay, this, I have, I also have part of this company. So therefore I should work hard like that. Employees also feel in something. They are not working only for the salary. They're working for the profit also, because they know at the end of the year, if you have high profit, I'm also getting 5%. Like that employees are also happy with that. So employee profit share options are very important. So I think that's why it's very appropriate this time. So she actually can raise more capital also. And also she can actually uh, use that money to set up an online business, right? Okay, we're going to the, the last question here, the assess whether Ashani uh, should form a public limited company to buy the shops. Okay, Lee Young, uh, can you read that part? What part? Going public is a big step for a business. It is an expensive move because of the costs involved, such as producing a prospectus, administration costs to cover the whole flotation process, legal costs and underwriting fees. Also, trading as a PLC means anyone can buy shares in the company. This means that an outsider could take over the company. The business would also have to release more financial information to provide and meet the cost of uh, most stock market uh, the, the, the meet the cost of stock market regulation. This might allow competitors to plan strategies to overcome the threat of Ishani's business in the market. However, Ishani has a firm objective. She wants to take the business to the next stage of development. Her online business is expanding fast and Ishani also thinks she could develop a small chain of shops. A major retailer has recently offered a number of stores for sale to buy, convert and stock them would cost 400 million rupees. By going public, Ishani could raise this sort of money and achieve her objective. However, Ishani might need to consider other approaches. She could grow more slowly and fund growth from profits. She may be able to borrow money from banks. Alterna alternatively, she may be able to persuade some other entrepreneurs to invest in her business. All these options would, be, would, need, to con would need to be considered before she finally decided to go public. However, if a flotation was successful, it would allow Ishani to achieve her objective. 
Thank you very much. So mainly you can see this case study, you can see uh, they've given the advantage and disadvantages of converting into public limited company. Firstly, uh, if she convert to PLC level, so she has to have a, some going public is expensive, you know, mainly underwriting fees, prospectors, administration. So, so the beginning of the answer, so they're giving the expensiveness of the going public. This option a little bit expensive for the Shani uh, in the beginning, because uh, in you converting your private company into PLC, uh, you have to uh, spend a little bit of money uh, for gain that uh, like a big amount of capital. So it means that uh, taking an outside would uh, take over the company. That's another risk you're exposing to a takeover also because there are a lot of rich people are there waiting to actually to buy these kind of small firms. But that's why there is a risk of losing control when you go to the share market, unless if you uh, like more closely, if you didn't monitor what happened to the shares, sometimes the controlling power, sometimes the director board, sometimes unknown people can come and sit with you. And, the, that's called, and also stock market regulation a little bit you know, complicated. Uh, these are the main bad side they explained beginning. However, uh, Ashani has a firm objective, the advantage side, you can actually, uh, she can take the business to next stage of the development. And also her online business is expanding fast. And then uh, so actually she can also, she can branch out her businesses into other areas uh, to buy out. And this advantage is given with the amount of money, what she can do. And there's an offer also from the retailer she can actually, a uh, uh, small chain of shops, she can operate like that. They're given the advantage of the PLC, uh, what she can do with that money. This is a proper application you can see. In the entire answer is about Ashani's vision, Ashani, what happened to Ashani, like that. And look at the conclusion, the however thing. Ashani might think about the other approaches. It's all, that's why I call alternative viewpoint. In your writing and conclusion, like you have to think about like, however, Ashani might consider other approaches, other options as well. So not only convert into a PLC, uh, what has the uh, organic growth? We call it organic growth because uh, she raised money, grows slowly, and fund her uh, own growth without going to share market. Like you can keep, you can stay uh, a little slow. This is a very little, you know, converting uh, organic growth is a slow approach. You can't, it's not a fast track, but you know, uh, so it will be uh, take some time, but you will be very strong because the private companies, a lot of private companies are there. Uh, they grow slowly like that and earn a lot of money like that. And then after they buy so many businesses, they buy lands, building, they expand. They are from their own money, right? But you can see in the Sri Lankan countries, you can see there are more than 9,000 uh, private companies are there. But in share market, we have only uh, 287, less than 300 uh, companies on each like Only uh, you can see out of 9,000, 300 means it's only just a 2% fraction, right? So you can see it's very uh, small amount. So, but it's ninety-eight percent of the business organizations are still like to stay private because they don't want to go involve the share market operations because that's too uh, complicated. But, but large organization definitely there is a time. It's a proper time you can enter. But Ishani, so you can give that opportunity. Uh, you can actually stay uh, still slowly. You can grow and you can find your money and you can be able to borrow some money from the banks without going to public. Alternative option, right? So she may be able to persuade some other entrepreneurs to invest in her business. There's another option that like he can help get help from another investor. We call this option like uh, venture capital. Venture capitalists are there, investors are there who like to help them in the startup early stage of the business growth. There are some lot of people are waiting outside to help them out for their expectation some profit share at the return. So they like to give millions of money. If you need 400 million, yes, they would like to give 400 million uh, for a percentage of uh, ownership. Right, but later on, after that, the after you finish your uh, business was expanded and you okay after they say five years, they will take, uh, they will go 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 again and they take their money and the profit they will leave. So there are people like that called venture capitalist, or different different methods are there like crowdfunding, venture capitalist, investment banks like that. So these are the alternative options like conclusion. So without saying. Uh, they, she should go in the P PLC level without advantage, outweigh the disadvantages. So I recommend this one without saying like that. You can say, no, there are some other alternative. However, she might consider other approaches as well like this. And all these options would need to be considered before she finally go for a decision. This is the conclusion. All of these options should be need to be considered before she finally decided to go in public. However, if flotation was successful, it would be allowed Akshan to achieve her objective. So this is the way that we are writing the conclusion, pay attention for 12 marker. Conclusion must be another, like a one para 
uh, proper paragraph because you are getting a mark for this, right? So 12 marker questions is only you have to write this conclusion. Nine marker no need, six markers no need, only just the 12 markers only. Okay. So today in my lesson, I try to actually uh, I, uh, mainly we finish this uh, questions and also we just mainly case study and main option only the appropriate of the business organization. I recap the lesson. And I start the Ishani's baby care case study chapter review. So in this case, you can understand. Uh, I explain you how to write the answers for nine marker structure and the twelve marker structure as well. And also, I uh, we explain a nice case study. And last point, I explain you how to write a proper conclusion. Also, like a, this is kind of a question evaluation evaluation questions. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. Now um, in my next session, so we will be do more passive questions with me uh, in the business location questions and everything. Uh, so in my next session, we'll see you with the past paper questions.